Now to start off the evening's entertainment, pray silence for... Ladies and gentlemen of the press, thank you for your patience. He's on his way. He'll be here any moment. Great. Who are we waiting for, anyway? Uh, somebody called Roy Hudd. I hope he doesn't bring that emu. <laughs> What's so special about him? We're here to celebrate his 50th birthday. So what does he do, this Roy Hudd? He's a comedian. Oh, you mean like Jimmy Tarbuck? No, she said he was a comedian. Oh, he's not one of those alternatives, is he? Oh, I don't think so. Anyway, a lot of men wear Janet Rager underwear. <laughs> he's arrived. Please gather round in the reception area. Well, I'm only here for the booze and the sausage rolls. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Roy Hudd. Yes. Anybody want to know about my 50th birthday? No. Doesn't anybody want to know what it feels like to be 50? No. Or even what it's been like this last 50 years? No. no. Oh, well, I'm going to tell you anyway. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. The saddest, the funniest, the most cursed of times. Ten thousand days to live, every one of weird kaleidoscope full of fear, full of foolish hope, bodies and foes. It was the worst of times, it was the best of times. The wildest, the wickedest, thrice blessed of times. Those 50 years of love and anguish and pain. Thank the Lord we don't have to live through them again. Yes, it all started in the 30s, the good old days. Rubbish. Where I lived, having a three-piece suite was sharing a Mars bar. The 40s was the golden age of radio. It Mar was all the rage. And Archie Andrews was still a tree in Epping Forest. <laughs> then came the 50s, with full employment. In fact, teenagers had so much money, old ladies were going round mugging them. <laughs> and in the swinging 60s, everybody followed the fashion. Even babies wore flared nappies. Oh, <laughs> In the 70s, I was a follower of flower power. Yeah. yeah. It's true. I worked for McDougal's. <laughs> and now we're in the 80s. And what have we got? Victorian values, millions unemployed. I don't care what Roy said. Bring back the 30s. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. The saddest, the funniest, the most cursed of times. Ten thousand days to live. Everyone a weird kaleidoscope. Full of fear. Buddies and foes. It was the worst of times. It was the best of times. The wildest. The wickedest. Yet thrice blessed of times. Those 50 years to fight and struggle and strive. How the hell did I stagger through them and survive? Hello. Really? Well, I'll tell him. I was born on the 16th of May. He's the landlord of the worm and trousers up the road. He says he's got an extension. Oh. <laughs> well, that's nice, isn't it, eh? My own party and they've all cleared off. Mind you, it's always been the same. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, My first birthday, you know, it was the very first time my dad had ever seen me. He got compassionate leave from the army. He was a hand grenade instructor. <laughs> <laughs> He picked me out of the pram in me nappy, pulled out the pin and slung me into next door's garden. <laughs> and how about my first stag party, eh? One of my pals got married. Why didn't half get drunk? I remember spending all evening chatting up this right little darling in a miniskirt. When I woke up the next morning, I was engaged to a Gordon Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> we were very happy for a few months. Mm. Then he ran off with one of the Queen's own. <laughs> And how about my 21st day? Eh? That was the year Harold Macmillan said, you've never had it so good. <laughs> I've never had it at all. 
<laughs> but by 40th, that was the one. That's the one when life begins, isn't it? Hey, your 40th. I'll never forget it, will I? We all sat round the magic old fire <laughs> with our hot milk and digestive biscuits. <laughs> then out came the wind carnets and I was away, wasn't I? <laughs> I did a strip to Russ Conway's side saddle. <laughs> all the women threw their surgical stockings into the middle of the room. I got the one with legs like an AA road now. <laughs> and that's how I was reunited with the Gordon Islander. <laughs> Happy days, eh? But there have been some amazing changes over the last 50 years, really. Particularly in the field of medical science, and especially in transplant surgery. True. Do you know there's people walking about today with hardly anything they started out with? <laughs> but how about that first heart transplant operation? Was it really the staggering scientific success we've all been led to believe? I wonder. There. I don't know, but it'll make a very nice draft excluder. <laughs> Good grief, what's that thing? Oh, no, that's... don't tell me. I know this one. Rhymes with something you do in the bath. That's it. Heart. Something you do in the bath? something throbbing here. Oh, me, I... He never stops, does he, eh? Ah, it's her heart. Well, we'll soon cure that for her. <laughs> there. Doctor? Where? You? <laughs> now you'll have to give her another heart. Oh, all right, little Miss Misery Guts. Go and get one, would you? Oh, yes, Doctor. All right, now let's get the old one out. <laughs> ah, there. <laughs> Stick a cherry on that, it'll make a very nice trifle. <laughs> now, where's that dirty little beast? I've got it. Well, don't come near me, then. No, Doctor. No, Doctor? There must be one here somewhere. Doctor! How did you find it? Oh, it was easy. I went to a lonely heart club. <laughs> I'll smack him in the mouth in a minute, I swear it. Now, bung it in. Oh, yes. Right, stitches. Thank yeah. oh. you. Now, then. Knit one. Pearl one. <clears throat> Drop one. There. <laughs> there we are. Finished. That's incredible, Doctor. You've just achieved the world's first ever heart transplant. It's a brilliant piece of work. <laughs> it's even more brilliant than you realize. How do you mean? I only came in to check the central heating. <laughs> <laughs> Now, inventions. Now, what has been the greatest invention in the last 50 years? Well, if you're enjoying this, you'd say television. But if you're not, well, you know who to blame, don't you? But just how do all these inventions get on the market in the first place? Good afternoon. I'd like to register a patent for my new invention. Certainly, sir. And uh, what have you invented? See if you can guess from my name. My name is George Byro. <laughs> you have invented the biro? That is correct. Oh, that's marvelous. Well done. A biro. Brilliant. Fantastic. What exactly is a biro? It's a pen. What? For sheep, you mean? No, 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 no. It's a writing pen. Um, this may come as a bit of a shock to you, sir. But pens have been invented already. <laughs> no, this is different. It's a brand new concept. It's going to make me a millionaire. People will be clamoring for more and more biros. Ah, because it's cheap. And it's got a revolutionary new nib which relies on a little ball bearing to control the flow of ink. No, because one month after you buy it, it mysteriously disappears and you have to go out and buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. And how may I help you? I should like to register a patent for my latest invention, please. I see. And what is your name, please? Mrs. Enid Fountain Pen. E. Fountain. Pen. Pen, yes. Don't tell me. Let me guess. You've invented a writing implement. What? Oh! <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Of course I know what you're thinking. No, no, no. It was my great-grandfather changed the name to Fountain Pen in 1852. Why? <laughs> he was bonkers. <laughs> so what have you invented? This. That is a fountain pen, actually, madam. Oh, not the pen, silly. The top. <laughs> it's a revolutionary new top. It comes undone the moment that you put it into your inside pocket and lets the ink <laughs> ooze 
down. All over your jacket lining is going to make me millions. How's that? I own a chain of dry cleaners. <laughs> You know, one of the greatest changes I've seen over the last 50 years has been in football. I mean, they even looked different in those days, didn't they? Broken noses, bandy legs, no teeth, and that was just the players' wives. <laughs> but the one great footballing year I'll never forget, well, any of us, eh? 1966, the year we beat the Germans for the third time. <laughs> but will we ever do it again? I wonder. Here we go, here we go, why do England court disaster? I'd say calculus was faster to explain. We're a fan to a man, and although it gets dejected, we're the autograph collecting and goes on. We've got Trent, we've got Kev, we've got Charlton, Jack and Bobby, and although it's just his hobby, Elton John. And we're smart when a player falls apart from the kindness of our heart. We tell him we write headlines and she's high, saying who's this hopeless guy? And suggested teams should try and sell him. You're transferred and you find yourself in trouble. First you grow designer stubble, that's a star. When they shout that you're out and you'll never find the right club, simply open up a nightclub and take half. Here in Spain, who complain? Watch the wines are in the cellar. You should even call Payan a lovely grub. When you're told that you're old and your legs all getting weaker, why not walk out on Ben Peaker's Dollar Club? On the slippery slope And it's difficult to cope But we cheer to give us hope Get, Get cracking! Here we go, here we go, here we go Once we prove to the world that we could be Who would know, who would know, who would know Why England teams now for the turning up to me I should like to register a patent for my latest invention, please. It's going to make me millions. <laughs> I see. And uh, what is your name, please? Uh, Mr. Catlitter. <laughs> <laughs> Here is my invention. <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm sorry about that. 
only it's already had several dry runs. <laughs> Wet ones too, by the smell of it. Now tell me, Mr. Cat Litter, what name did you have in mind for your invention? Well, I... Oh. <laughs> You don't think it would be too immodest of me if I were to name it after myself, do you? What? Cat litter? Oh, no. Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Does your cat like to go when and where it pleases? Do its natural bodily functions sometimes cause embarrassment? Well, your troubles and puddles are over. Now your cat can go all over Derek. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> You know, one of the things I hated most when I was a kid was having me hair cut. Eh? Awful, wasn't it? A ninepence electric clipper job up the back. Sat on that board across the chairs, eh? I don't know which was worse, the hairs down my collar or the splinters up my backside. <laughs> but of course, everything changed when the Beatles came along, didn't it? Kids couldn't wait to get to the hairdressers, could they? Whatever you say, the kids of today are past any form of forbearance. The way they go round would really astound the most understanding of parents. The 60s arrived. How have we survived? We're told we behave like the square do. It's sad to reflect the claims to respect. Now rest on the length of your hairdo. Today, I'll past any form of forbearance. 
the state of their hair would drive to despair the most understanding of parents. Nineteen fifty three, coronation year, and on June the second, our beloved leader was getting crowned. Maggie Thatcher was having her teeth fixed. <laughs> Meanwhile, down at the Abbey, her second in command was being proclaimed Elizabeth the second, and at the same time, halfway across the world, another great British success was being achieved by a New Zealander and a Nepalese. Kenzie? Kenzie? I know. It's these living yak underpants. Nearly <laughs> <laughs> there. Give us a hand. That's it. Come on. Just three more steps. Morning. And... <laughs> Good. <laughs> Who are you? Derek Poges is the name. <laughs> Assistant Deputy Chairman of the Sydenham and District Amateur Mountaineering Society. <laughs> I don't believe it. But this is Everest, the world's tallest mountain. Yes, how on earth did you get here? Well, you see now, I, I turned left at Boots the Chemist, went down the High Street, and right at the Three Bells, left at the Gentleman's Urinals in Chapel Street, and followed the signs for the Himalayas. I don't know who you are or oh, what you're... To... I know you've told me that, but I don't know who you are or what you're doing here. But listen to me, this is Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain, up until now unconquered by man. Uh -huh. And either you clear off and leave Tensing and I to enjoy our moment of glory, or I shall be forced to evict you with my boot. Don't you want your picture taken, then? What? Your picture taken together, yes, to recall this moment of glory. All right, all right, here. You take the picture and then go away and leave us to it, all right? Yes. <laughs> David Bailey. <laughs> right then, here we are. Would you just move back a little, please? <laughs> little more, please. Oh, dear me, I am slipping. <laughs> Darling, I've got another camera. <laughs> well, that's it. Fifty years. What was it all about? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. The saddest, the funniest, the most cursed of times. Ten thousand days to live. Everyone a weird kaleidoscope full of fear. Full of foolish hope bodies and clothes. It was the worst of times, it was the best of times. The wildest, the wickedest, yet thrice blessed of times. Those 50 years of love and anguish and pain. Thank the Lord we don't have to live through them again. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. The saddest, the funniest, the most. That's it, folks. Thank the Lord we don't have to live through them again. Bye.